My name is Jesse Walker. I was going to be joined this evening by my colleague Connor Stowe. He's actually in transit and the bus was delayed, so he won't be joining us this evening. But um, I'm a Global Programs Advisor for Rustic Pathways. I've worked for Rustic Pathways for more than 10 years now, and I've led programs in about 10 different countries. So I'm more than willing to answer any questions you have about our programs, whether first time travelers or um, any certain interest that you're looking for, how the enrollment works. Hopefully we will go through um, a lot of your questions this evening. I will kind of work through here. I have a colleague of mine um, behind the scenes. So please do feel free to use the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can send them in via text and he will answer some of the questions while I'm presenting. And then we'll also have a little bit of time at the end for some questions and answers as long as my voice lasts. So um, during this webinar, we are going to talk a little bit about Rustic Pathways. If you're brand new to, to our company, I will go into our health and safety practices. Uh, we'll talk about base house programs, spring break programs, our young explorers programs, our scholarships, and I will show you how to enroll. And then again, we'll have that time at the end for some questions and answers. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, Rustic Pathways, as a company, we do see ourselves as the intersection between education, travel, and philanthropy. We've been around for about 36 years now, and we run trips in about 20 different countries. So we have a full range of programs, uh, about 100 different programs to choose from. 75 to 80% of them are service oriented. And then we also have education programs like language immersion and medical certification, as well as purely adventure programs. And something to note as well is all of our programs are designed to connect. Um, so it may not be you're the first thing that you think of when you think a uh, first time traveler, but programs within a given country do begin and end on the same exact day in the same country. You'll notice the dates um, overlap a little bit, but that is because it accounts for travel time to and from the US. As an international traveler, you'll actually just get the dates that you are in country and so that you can combine trips and so Students can actually build an itinerary that's perfectly fit to their interests. Uh, talk a little bit about our health and safety questions. This is for, for new families. This is always a, a top subject. There's a lot going on in the world and parents want to know how do you guarantee that our kids are going to be safe. You know, travel is there is inherently some risk. It's not staying in your own home um, and whether you're traveling to Los Angeles or New York or if you're traveling abroad, there is going to be some risk in that. And obviously we want to mitigate that as much as possible as a company. Just given our history, we have had a lot of time to kind of uh, adapt and develop our risk management and safety policies. We are an industry, industry leader in this sector, and I'm sure there's a lot of companies that say that, and your next question is going to be, is going to be why or how? How can you prove that? Um, for all of our countries, we have, for all of our programs actually within countries, we have very thorough risk management policies in place, not only for each program, but actually for every single day of every program. This means that our program leaders will know exactly how far away they are from a clinic, how far they are away from a hospital, who to contact in a case of emergency. Um, and speaking of emergency, all of our students who travel abroad, so outside of the US, will be covered by international SOS insurance. And this is emergency evacuation insurance for whatever reason, whether that's a natural disaster or for medical purposes. At the drop of a hat, we can get that student where they need to be at the the best facility um, possible for that particular situation. So that's something to keep in mind. And as parents, you'll actually have access to their database. Um, you'll get a membership card before you or as you enroll um, a little bit later in the spring, and then you can actually actually access their information. They have really, really detailed information um, based on or, or revolving around what's going on in the, the country. And again, hospital facilities and doctors names and everything like that. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, we also have uh, program leaders that are WFRs. All of our full-time program leaders are a WFR, which stands for Wilderness First Responder. And I usually explain that as one step below an EMT, but with an emphasis on wilderness medicine. So they're pretty highly medically certified. They're able to handle most of what would happen in a program. And then if they are not full-time, they may have a WFR, they may have other medical certifications like WFA, which is Wilderness First Aid, or at least they will have um, first aid and CPR training and they'll often be uh, paired with a staff member that has a higher medical certification. So we know we can take care of, um, of your kids, of our kids in country. Um, our base house programs, so I'm gonna uh, head over to the website in just a moment, but this is a really 
um, wonderful place to start for first time travelers. Our base house, as you can actually see a couple pictures here, this is our uh, rainforest and volcanoes rainforest uh, base house in the top left corner. I'm in Costa Rica and there's a rice fields base in Thailand and our base house in Fiji. Um, base house programs typically offer more comfortable amenities for first time travelers. Base house programs also mean that the students are often not traveling as much. They're gonna be located in one, one spot. They will be sleeping usually in the base house every single night during the program. And they may travel off to other parts around in the surrounding areas for their service projects, but come back to that same spot. So it's a little bit less travel, a little bit less stressful for first time travelers. They're able to kind of leave their stuff in one spot. And another benefit of the base houses is they typically have more comfortable amenities. So that means um, Western style toilets or seat seated toilets, um, running water, electricity, things like that, that some of our programs where students are looking for a much more uh, rustic situation, um, it's typically not going to be at our, rest, our base houses because we do want to make sure that students feel comfortable. And in fact, some of the programs even have, or some of the base houses have um, swimming pools or an infinity pool. Um, there is a bit of a range within the base houses, but, um, but for the most part, we do want students to feel comfortable. And you can find more information. Let me just um, step over here to our website about base houses. This is a, a really wonderful place for families to start your search for a program. If you click the menu in the top right-hand corner, and go to how it works. There's a bunch of really helpful links here, one of which is going to be the program types link. And a lot of times families call in, they say, you have 100 programs, they all look amazing, I have no idea how to start narrowing them down. So we have a couple links here, you can search by type or by personality. One of them is going to be the base houses. This is going to show you all of our programs that run out of our base houses. And again, they are properties that we own and operate or in some cases rent for the entire duration of the summer, but for the sole use of our staff and students. And then you can also check right here, which is first time travelers. Great way, great place to start um, a synopsis of programs that we feel are a good start for um, first time travelers. And I just want to make a note, it doesn't necessarily mean the student has never traveled before. Oftentimes what we mean for first time travelers is either that or this is their first time venturing off without their family. It's going to be the first time alone abroad. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean they haven't traveled before. It just means they want to start slow and not quite so um, intense or rustic. But again, you can kind of take a look and you can also search if they, if you know they're a first time traveler, but they're really looking for an animal conservation program, great way to, to narrow those options. I do want to make a note of our spring break programs. Um, they are coming out there right around the corner and this is the time that families start to think, we've just got through the holidays, what's next? And spring break is just a couple months away. We do have, um, dates available throughout the spring. So if you look into the programs, which I will actually pop back out here and just show you on types of programs right here is spring break. You can click that and it's going to show you all five of our spring break options. We have programs in Fiji, Peru, Costa Rica, the U.S. and Dominican Republic. They're all going to be pretty balanced programs. Most of them have some sort of service element to them, as well as adventure, pro, um, adventure activities and cultural immersion. So it's a really nice balance that they're going to get in that one week that they have to travel. If you don't see your dates, um, there should we, we try to match them. We do kind of take into consideration the spring breaks that take place across the country. But please feel free to give us a call and we can see what we have still available. So Young Explorers programs, this is another one um, that we have designed specifically for younger age groups. So typically middle schoolers, ages 12 to 13. Um, the guides are actually specifically trained for this age group. So they're catering to the younger crowd. And they're also designed again to be a balanced program. So some of our service programs for high school students tend to focus on one particular area. They're gonna be um, some more critical issues programs or they're going to look at one type of service and the students are gonna get an intensive experience within that. 
Young Explorers programs really want to help students of that age get their first global international experience, um, learn what it is to be a global citizen. It's going to have tons of adventure activities. You'll see them maybe surfing or whitewater rafting or rappelling, um, lots of like leadership and um, group dynamic activities to help kids um, get to know one another and have you know a, a good experience where they meet friends possibly from around the world. And um, then again, some a service element and then a lot of cultural immersion to get them to know the, the country. So it's a, it's a nice balance. Um, you can find those in the same place. I'll kind of pull that up just so you can see that here on the website. But there is a way to, from that uh, program types page, to see just the Young Explorers programs um, that we have to offer. And we do have a couple new, newer itineraries this year. My menu. Um, right here. We've got uh, Panda Conservation in China. We have California Rush in California, Young Explorers Down Under in Australia, and then Pura Vida in Costa Rica. So you've got a couple different options there. These programs do tend to fill up uh, pretty quickly um, because we just have the four options. So definitely take, check them out and look at the session dates. One thing to note on our website is that it is up to date per the minute. So it will tell you right here, this is a good example, whether it's available. Limited usually means fewer than half of the spaces are left. And then once it gets down to about four or five spots, it actually starts to count down. So you'll know whether there's limited space or whether you need to hop on it right away if this is your desired date. Don't forget if you do have any questions or if I'm not covering something as thoroughly as, as, thoroughly as you'd like, um, feel free to pop them in the Q&A section there. I will talk about our scholarships for a little bit. We do offer, last year we offered $285,000 in scholarships for our students. There's a couple different scholarships that we do offer, including a critical issues scholarship. Um, I will pull that page up. This is something new that we're offering. It's a program, um, really exciting summit that we're offering in Thailand. So I will pull that up on the website. We also have a teacher appreciation program, which is not only for teachers, it's actually for anybody in the education industry. So if you are an administrator, if you work at a school at all, you're eligible. We absolutely love and cherish um, our teacher community and education community. So anything we can do to get um, teachers, students on our programs is awesome. Um, there is a, a table actually on the scholarships page of discounts available uh, for that that's separate from our scholarships. There's no separate application process other than filling out a form that uh, proves your professional place within the industry. And once you're in, um, you are eligible for that discount on our programs. And then we have our service scholarship. So that can actually be found again underneath the how it works section here. Scroll down to our scholarships page. And there's going to be the different scholarships. We have our service scholarship. Um, the way this works is there's two different deadlines. One of them has already passed in December. The second deadline is in March and students will be actually um, alerted whether they received a scholarship in April. This is for students who have a dedication to service. Uh, we love to see students who've already done something in their local area, their passion and involvement within service projects, um, not only abroad, but uh, again, in their own neighborhood. And if you are, um, if you do receive a service scholarship, you can click here to read more about how that application process works. If you do receive, you'll be sent a list of 15 to 20 programs to choose from. So something to keep uh, in mind is it's not eligible for all programs, and we do want to encourage students to be flexible on their program selection, but there will be a mix of one and two week options in various countries around the world. The Critical Issues Summit Scholarship. This is um, something that I really encourage you to check out. There's um, a couple of videos, a lot of information on our website. Um, the summit page is actually here within this scholarship page. You can click here to learn more about the Critical Issues Summit. Um, but it is taking students um, who have a passion for critical issues. And critical issues are what we have identified as, as several issues that are facing this generation, such as um, water conservation and water, clean water access for all, uh, women's education and empowerment programs. Uh, there's five different um, tracks that you can choose from. Uh, and this here it is. So um, in Laos, you'll be looking at globalization issues, Vietnam, access to education, 
Myanmar and Thailand to be looking at the refugee crisis. Thailand is gender equality and Cambodia is access to water. So um, it may or may not be for first time travelers. We are absolutely welcome um, to, we, we absolutely welcome first time travelers if this is something they're really interested in. It's a great um, opportunity to build off of that as you go through high school and as, you, as you're looking into different colleges. There are going to be um, guest speakers and you're, you're gonna spend one week in country, in your select country in your track, um, learning and processing and, and batting ideas around with um, both your guides and the other students. And then everyone will come back to Thailand for the second week. There'll be an innovation and action um, set of activities and days of lecturers. And then um, students will actually um, pitch um, an idea to not necessarily solve, but to address one of these issues. And the top idea, the top group will actually receive $10,000 in seed money from one of our partners to actually address that issue and to, to put their idea into motion, which is incredible. Um, it's definitely something that will look great to colleges, but I think beyond that, just something that if students have an interest in this, it's a, a fantastic way to really deeply get involved and start you down that path for future studies. So highly, highly recommend recommend that um, whether you're ready for it this year or not um, check it out read through the information and, and spread the word if you know somebody who's interested um, on top of that we do have gap year scholarships um, and that teacher appreciation program which you can read more about here um, and that is for our scholarship program Oh, I should note though, um, for the Critical Issues Summit Scholarship, the deadline is January 17th. So that is one week away from today. Um, it is a bit of a more of an intensive application process. The scholarship it actually, is actually covering 100% of the program fund itself as well as airfare. So it's all inclusive, fantastic program, but you have one week to um, take a look at that and send in your application. So check it out now. <laughs> Okay, so how to enroll, um, I flip flop in here back and forth, but um, the best way to see how to enroll, it's a pretty straightforward application process. On any page, you can find the enrollment button here in the top right hand corner. Click that and you're going to find um, a little bit of information about how to enroll and deadlines, and then here's the application. So essentially, um, you will apply for a particular program um, through the enrollment form. It's about six or seven pages long, but each page is, you know, basic participant information, parent information, uh, program selection, so it doesn't take too long. Once you submit your application, you actually, it takes about three to four business days to process your application, after which you'll receive uh, what we call your welcome email. And that welcome letter is going to come from your personal travel advisor. This is the person who has been assigned to your account, will be assigned to your family, and they're gonna help you with um, flight uh, flight information and booking your flights, forms, any other questions that come up, they'll be there. You'll actually, in that welcome letter, have their direct contact details. So you no longer have to go through all the prompts of the main line. You can call and email them directly with any questions that come up. And um, that's it. That's a pretty easy enrollment process. We do offer payment plans. Um, so you can either pay in full or pay in installments, but there's 3% service fee for the latter option, just to be aware of. Um, and then if you have any other questions, my team, the Global Program Advisors, are always here to help. We're here um, usually nine to nine Eastern, Monday through Thursday, and then nine to five on Friday. So give us a call, you can send us an email, and we can help you, help you walk you through any of those questions. I see we do have a couple questions coming in, so let me see what we've got. So just um, someone would like to see the scholarship information again. So I'm going to go back here. Scholarship information, if you click the right hand corner menu, well sandwich menu, um, it may look a little bit different on uh, mobile, but you'll still look for that sandwich menu. and It'll be a drop down. You'll look for how it works. How it works section is here on a PC. And then you'll go down here to scholarships. I think that's the page I was already on. So here, scholarships, um, you'll see them all listed here. The Critical Issues Summit Scholarship, there's some information. There's a page about the summit itself. And again, there's videos and a bunch of information about the presenters and some of our partners. 
and then you can read more here about the scholarship itself. It is, like I said, a little bit more intensive of an application process than some of the others because it is full ride. And um, I would definitely recommend checking it out as soon as possible. Um, I have a question about what fees are charged during enrollment. So this is a great question. Um, if you are a new student, there is a $100 application fee. This kind of serves to get the student all set up in the system. There are no um, application fees for alumni, so that's you, something you can keep in mind for future uh, programs with us. But it is $100 for now, and that does increase in late March. Once we get into our late booking season, that goes up to $200. So that's some, a deadline to kind of keep in mind that it's $100 now to enroll. Um, that is the only thing that is non-refundable. Um, depending on uh, the, the, the optional purchases. So I'll get into that in a little bit, but the due at the time of enrollment would be the enrollment fee. And then if you're choosing any of the optional insurances, and it will walk you through this on the application, but we do have a health coverage insurance that covers anything from uh, minor incidents, incidents in country to lost baggage or delayed flights. Um, and you can kind of click into that and see everything that's covered. We highly recommend it. We do require health insurance, if you already have your other coverage with another company, totally fine. But if you don't, Tripmate is the company that we partner with. And we do know, we do guarantee that they cover all of the activities on our programs. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's actually pretty affordable. I think it's something like $85 per session or something. So something to um, that I would recommend. Um, and so the other one of the other optional um, fees that you'll see is the optional trip cancellation waiver. And that is just uh, essentially trip cancellation insurance. If you do have to cancel your program for any, any reason, this gives you the ability to get that full refund on what you've paid. Uh, do keep in mind we have what we call our um, no anxiety policy. And this is just to let you know that as a company, we know things come up, we know things um, change or you may have um, an injury or sickness come up last minute. You can always, whether, you, whether or not you purchase any insurance, you can always escrow your funds for up to two years. Um, if you contact us, let us know. Um, no questions asked, we will escrow the funds that you pay towards the program for up to two years so you can do a program with us in the future. That's just something to keep in mind. And you can, because we have several different policies, you can always um, find this on our website. Again, click that menu, go down here underneath how it works to the FAQs section. And that will take you to a bunch of additional information. It's usually the third section down underneath administrative questions. You can find what if I want to change or cancel programs and that will detail our different cancellation policies. A little bit easier to read sometimes on the web than to listen to my raspy voice. <laughs> um, another thing to point out too, if you do have more questions about safety, again, always give us a call. We can walk you through every single one of your questions if you have specific concerns. But we do have some information about um, health and safety on our website. I do, since I just happened to land on it, do want to point out our student impact page. This is, um, let me do one at a time. So health and safety is here. This is going to walk you through some of our practices and protocols that we have in place. We also, as a company, have a dedicated safety and risk management director who audits all of our programs. And we are the only company that we know of um, in this industry that has 100% vendor, vendor um, compliance. And that means that anytime that we're working with a partner in country, whether that's a whitewater rafting company or a, a skydiving company or what have you, we have actually a, a fairly stringent and strict safety protocol um, policy in place. And every single one of our partners in every country does comply and they go through this process every single year. Um, so that's something we're really proud of. It's something that if you are looking at other companies, welcome you to ask them about their vendor vetting process um, and how many comply with that, if they even have one, because I think that's pretty unique to Rustic Pathways. The deadline for the $100 enrollment fee is, so it will be $100 for new students through, I believe, the end of March. Um, I can get that exact date for you, but typically it's, up until the time that we start to book flights. Once we book flights, um, it's better to get the students in before that time. And so um, it's around that time. Uh, oh, sorry, it looks like it is March 1st. I was just sent the answer. So March 1st is the deadline for um, the $100 enrollment fee. After that, it'll be $200. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. 
Um, we do have a question about are all applicants ac accepted? So for all of our programs, normal programs, not including our scholarships, yes, it's a first come, first serve. Um, that being said, there may be some uh, situations such as health concerns that we may want to shift a student to another program. So if a student comes to us and has a severe peanut allergy, we're going to try to shift them from Thailand into a program like Costa Rica or Fiji or, or someplace that might be a better fit just because um, it's very hard to reduce the risk or, or guarantee that there's not going to be any peanuts in the um, food in Thailand. It's just such a major part of their cuisine. So um, it's not that we don't accept certain students, but there will be, um, we do have a full-time medical screener that goes through all of our medical forms and there may be a situation where we'll give the family a call, walk through things and maybe see if there's a better fit. Yeah, so it looks like um, there's actually a question already about peanut allergies. So um, let me see, I can pull this up. We have students, we have, uh, you know, been in operation for 35 years, 36 years, I think now. Um, let me put this slide up for you guys, just in case you can't hang around. Um, but we have encountered all sorts of dietary needs, whether a student is vegetarian or vegan or has celiacs. Um, it, it's something that we deal with every single summer. As far as who cooks for the students, because we have 100 programs, there's actually quite a bit of variety in the programs. So um, we may have students, especially at our base houses, again, another reason to, to look into those base house programs. Those programs will all have our own private chef someone who's worked with us for years, someone who is used to cooking for different dietary needs. Another thing that I recommend doing though is if there is a concern of yours for your student's diet, give us a call. Um, I am happy to go into most programs I will know off the top of my head. If it's a question, I can reach out to our country teams um, if you have a, a very specific dietary need, but we can look into that. We only want to have students on programs where we can guarantee their safety and the students are going to be safe and happy and healthy and get the food that they need. So um, again, for most dietary needs, we're able to accommodate them in most programs, but if it's something very specific, give us a call and we can look into that. Um, question about our program leaders. So our program leaders tend to be, uh, they have to be at least 22 years old and on average, they're actually mid to late 20s. They have, again, most full-time staff, all full-time staff would have a woofer certification. Um, most other staff will have some other medical certification in between and they have to have a minimum of first aid and CPR. They do go, go for a full background check. That's something to keep in mind. We actually have just started our hiring process now and it will go through March for summer programs. Um, and they go through both an online training as well as at least a week of in-country training before the summer. So this is going to um, involve involved everything from medical training and uh, brushing up on what they'll expect during the summer to um, knowing where the program goes, knowing the locations that they should be aware of, and also group dynamic, um, group activities, ways to keep an eye out for clicks or, or students who aren't meshing as well. Or think it's, it's really all inclusive to make sure that it's all run very smoothly and we're, we're looking out for any, any yellow flags. Let's see, got quite a few questions coming in. Let's keep them coming. Question about um, community service hours. So yes, actually, we, all students who complete a community service program will receive an official certificate in the end of the summer. And we found about 95% of schools accept our service hours. That other 5%, they have very specific requirements such as the service being done within 50 miles of the school or something like that. But for the most part, Rustic Pathway Service Certificates are accepted anywhere um, for school service hour requirements. And yes, I believe they also count towards National Honor Society hours as well, um, as well as a presidential award. I think we have a question about Wi-Fi ability, availability. So this looks like it's a question more about the, the total co um, communication. Um, if I don't answer this thoroughly, I can definitely read this again and um, get back to you. But essentially, um, all of our programs, again, because we have such a wide variety, have a different level of communication. 
in general, rustic pathways, we do want our students to be as disconnected as possible. It's a really rare opportunity for students to be out of their box, away from their school, away from their, their general friend group, and be fully immersed in an experience in a new culture, making friends from around the world. Um, just as a side note, we actually had students from more than 60 different countries join us in 2018. So it's an awesome added extra inter international dynamic that students can experience with on the trip. And the last thing we want is for them to go and be given all these opportunities and this awesome experience and they're on their phones kind of trying to, you know, curate their Instagram and their Snapchat. So that being said, understandable that parents want to make sure that they can contact their students and that they're okay. So we've got a couple of things in place. Um, we do have a full-time year-round 24-hour emergency hotline. You can reach us at any time. You will have that number and you can reach us if anything comes up on your end. We can connect you with our, the staff in country if necessary, or we can get a message to them. You will also receive an email when they land to make sure that, you, that your student is happy, healthy, landed safely, have all their luggage, and that they're there safe with, you, with our staff. And depending on the length of the trip, you'll also get at least one update mid-trip. So we always try to send photos whenever possible and an update about the group, just so that you can kind of keep in the loop and you know they're having a good time. We do try to say no news is good news. So if you don't hear from your student, it usually means they're fully immersed and they're having a good time. As far as Wi-Fi ability for students to reach us or reach you at home, there's really a vast um, range of options. So some programs will have a day or two at a guest house that might have Wi-Fi. Some programs might have a little bit more. Some programs take place in a country like Tanzania or Fiji where even if you have an international plan and you think they're all set, oftentimes the reception just isn't there and the, the phone company says there will be and there won't be. So we want to make sure that you feel safe and comfortable with Rustic Pathways. They, that's why we want to have as much resource out there and that you can reach us at, at any time. But we also just want to make sure that we are giving the students the best experience possible um, and that they can fill you in on all the details when they get home. Um, yeah, so uh, you, you will always be able to reach us. Students may be able to reach you depending on the program or the country. And if you do have concerns about that, give us a call. Looks like we have a question about changing programs. So um, changing programs, it depends a little bit on when you enrolled. If you have already enrolled and you uh, enrolled during early enrollment, which for new students takes place um, July through October 15th, um, then you actually have, or if you signed up during a promotion in the, in, during the holidays, you have the added benefit of changing your program up until March 1st for no cost. Uh, if you're signing up now, since we're a little bit closer to the season, there will be a fee to change programs. So we wanna make sure that you're pretty sure that that's the one you want when you enroll. That being said, um, it's a $100 change fee until we book your flights. So once we book your flights, there's going to be a flight change fee, and that might be a little bit more expensive um, depending on the airline and the date, but um, it's a $100 change fee, so don't worry too much about it if you do need to change your program um, between now and when we start to book flights. See, I don't see any other questions, so I'm going to give you guys another minute. But just to reiterate, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for dealing with my raspy voice. Um, do give us a call anytime. I'm happy to answer any and all questions. Um, if you did try and give us a call this last week, you may have gotten our voicemail. We have been in a few meetings as a company, but um, we are back up and running and on schedule. So we're available during, the, during office hours. And we can give you a call back um, anytime. One more question looks like has come in. So how, how, is it, how is it that we're keeping students' valuables safe in the base houses? Um, it depends a little bit on the base house. Students, first of all, for passports, students will actually hand their passports to our staff as soon as they land in, in country. So they'll go through customs and immigration. They will hand their passports over. They will not see their passports again until they're on their way back at the airport. So no chance of them losing it. Um, a lot of our students are super responsible and wouldn't lose their passport. We don't want to take any chances. So that's not an issue. Our staff will keep them safe. As far as any other valuables, first we don't really recommend that students bring um, a laptop or a tablet or anything like that. Um, if they're bringing something like a GoPro or obviously they'll have a wallet typically, um, we do uh, have a safe place to keep them and whether that may be a safe, an actual physical safe in the staff room or there's going to be a room that stays locked um, where kids can keep their things. 
um, the staff will actually go through, go over that with students. When they land, they'll give them the proper or protocols for keep, keeping track of their, var their valuables. But it does depend a little bit on where they are and what's, what's been uh, set aside for that purpose. Um, and yes, so just to reiterate, our office hours are typically Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern, and then uh, Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. If you happen to get a voicemail, um, sometimes it does go a little bit crazy during the middle of the day or right at the beginning of the day, um, just let us know a good time to call us back. We also have another option on the website uh, where you can actually schedule a call with us. Um, so that will actually reach one of either myself or one of my colleagues, the uh, program advisors, and you can tell us exactly what time you'd like a call and we can do that so that you can avoid kind of the back and forth. Um, if there are no more questions, I think I will end it there, but just, oh, one more. Oh, great question. So I didn't show you this on the website, but in advance, we do have um, flight information for all of our programs. So there's a couple different ways you can find that information. First of all, under how it works, there is flights and travel. This is gonna give you some really good, valuable, uh, general information about how we book our flights, international taxes and surcharge, group ticket information. You can scroll through all of these. And then for specific countries, you can get that information here. So for Costa Rica, I'll click here. This is gonna tell you the airline, the hub airports. And for all US-based students, you're only responsible for getting to the hub airport. And then you're going to fly from there with our chaperones for safety reasons to country and that country. So at that point, when they join our staff, they will be with our staff the entire time. Our students are never allowed to spend some time in the market for a couple hours on their own. They'll, they'll always be with our staff. Um, and this will tell you the price of the flight, um, the details, if there are any internal flights, um, or if you'd like to connect countries, if you're connecting current countries, it'll have that information there as well. The other way to simply find that, um, just to show you, for example, if you are looking at Costa Rica, um, every program is going to have um, some basic information underneath the thumbnail, the price, and then this plus airfare link, you can click that and it will take you right to the country's travel page. So that's a little bit easier place to find that and it'll take you direct, directly there. If you're coming from outside the U.S., you are able to book your own flights directly. You don't have to fly to the U.S. first and then go to your country. And your personal travel advisor will help you figure out those flights. Any other questions? I, again, appreciate your patience. Thanks for the shout out there. <laughs> and um, let's see. Yeah, so for Costa Rica, that's right. The um, hub airports are Houston and Newark. All of our hubs are Houston, Newark, JFK, Miami, and Los Angeles. And so if you're coming from Connecticut, Connecticut you would just fly down to, to Newark for, for Costa Rica. And sometimes if you have family one place, maybe, you know, a family in Salt Lake City or Denver, I'm actually located in Denver. If you're flying from Denver, Los Angeles is a little bit closer, but if you have family in New York, you can choose that one. So it's up to you which hub airport you choose if there's more than one. In some cases, you have just one option. Um, and just to kind of walk you through that as well, if you are flying into the hub airport, if you're not located right there and will be driving, um, then we have airport coordinators, which their position is actually to stay on the outside of security and help students get to where they need to be. So you'll actually have their contact details that comes a couple of days before you travel. If the student lands, they will be sent exact instructions on how to meet up with the group. But if for whatever reason they get uh, mixed up or they want to give us a call, we have staff in the airport that can help them in that process, make it a smooth travel day. And then that's in addition to our flight chaperones. So once they meet the group, they'll start to uh, mingle and get to know the kids. Oftentimes they're playing games or playing their ukulele if they've brought one. And at that point, at some point when they get close to departure, the, the chaperone will actually take the entire group through security escort and fly with them all the way to their country destination until they meet their staff in country. And that flight chaperone is oftentimes a full-time staff member. I usually flight chaperone at least one trip every year. Um, and so they're also um, super qualified. They have medical uh, certification as well and um, are able to, to work with those kids and make sure that they're safe. And hopefully that was helpful.
uh, again, any questions, you just let us know. Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening and hope you have a fantastic weekend. Bye.